everyone. I'm Jordan Nicole. And I'm Fabian Rosales. And this is Good Evening KU. So what's up? Nothing much. It's the third week of school, so everything, well, actually I have like two tests this week, so it's yeah. kind of hectic already. Yeah, I mean, it's hump day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost over the hump. Yeah, and then once we're off, we're going to get greeted with like five to seven inches of snow. Yeah, yeah, not ready for that. So how have you been handling your studies? Are you procrastinating? Are you watching movies? Um, I've been watching movies while doing homework, but which also means like I've been watching movies, just movies. Yeah. And with movies, like the Oscars are coming up, so I'm trying to catch up with like the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. So what are your favorite nominations? I'm rooting for Roma to win because I love that movie and I don't know, it's like special to me because like it was based in Mexico, my family's from Mexico and we mm -hmm. all like bonded over that movie. Oh, awesome. I haven't seen Roma, so, mm -hmm. or to the people watching that haven't seen it, can you like fill us in what happens? Um, it's basically about like this, well, maid who works with this fam, like this middle, upper middle class family and just like, um, she later on gets impregnated by her boyfriend mm -hmm. and she tries to get like in a, well, yeah, she tries to figure out a way to get an abortion and like the mom of the family tries to help her and then goes on after that. Oh, awesome. Well, <laughs> Black Klansman is also nominated for Best Picture. Have you seen Black Klansman? I have not. I've wanted to. It's on my list to watch. Yeah. Um, Spike Lee, director, this is his first nomination, right? Oscar yeah, I think nomination, so. which is insane because he's been in the film industry for years now. Probably mm -hmm. like before the both of us were born, which yeah. is <laughs> crazy. So what are your thoughts on Black Klansman? Do you think it could win or? It could possibly win. I heard a lot of good things about it. My friends who watched it, they love the movie. Mm -hmm. So I think it has a good chance of winning. Awesome. Yeah, um, one of my personal favorites is A Star is Born with Lady Gaga and Bradley <laughs> Cooper. Um, I was really caught off guard by that movie. It's not a movie that I would like go to the movie theater and just pick out, but Bradley Cooper caught me off guard. His vocals are on point. They're pretty good. Yeah, I haven't really gone to watch that movie either. My One of my closest friend, friends is like obsessed with the movie. She's mm -hmm. seen it like 40 times already. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she's seen it so many <laughs> times. That's and like crazy. each time she's like cried. Yeah, yeah, there is, I'm not gonna ruin it for you guys, but <laughs> trigger warning at the end. Yeah, so it looks like from now until February 24th, we have a lot of movies to catch up on. I'm probably gonna be trying to like watch all the Oscar nominations and music. Oh, we forgot about music. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite like songs is from like which nominated for our original song is uh, just all the stars. Sorry. All the stars, yeah. Kendrick Lamar and, and Susan. Yeah, yeah, from the Black Panther album. But I haven't seen Black Panther. Oh my gosh! Please tell me Wakanda Forever. <laughs> <laughs> you get that reference? No. I've heard it all over the place. Yeah. Like when the movie came out, I was. Everywhere I went, just all I heard was like Wakanda Forever. I was like, okay. Yeah, so when you go home tonight, you're gonna go home, mm -hmm. you're gonna eat, first thing you're gonna do <laughs> is watch Black Panther, right? I mean, it's on my list. Just, just lying, I'm not like, gonna watch it, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not a fan of like superhero movies, even though like a lot of people who've seen it are like, oh yeah, it's like not like a typical superhero movie and like you don't really, a lot of people don't see it as that way. And a lot of my friends who also don't like superhero movies are like, oh wait, they loved it. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm just still, I'm really stubborn. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel that. So is there anything else that you would like to let the audience know before we sign off? Um, just get ready for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. It's just three weeks till spring break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're going to be switching gears from movies to politics. Up next, we have Evan Corson coming, and he's over the Democratic Executive Director. <laughs> <laughs> See, I blinked there. So up next, stay tuned. We have a special guest coming. For students searching for a way to stay active in an outdoorsy way, the city of Lawrence has bike trails running in every direction. And with the new Bike Share program, we can stay in shape as we tour the sites of our beautiful city. Clinton Lake is only a short 30 minute bike ride away from Daisy Hill and has the most incredible sunset location in all of Lawrence. Walking campus may give you the KU calves, but biking can give you the KU thighs. Bike Lawrence today. Hello everyone, welcome back to Good Morning KU. I'm Carson Turner and I'm joined here with 
Ethan Corson. He is the new Dole Fellow at the Dole Institute of Politics for the spring 2019 semester. So thank you for coming on to the show, Ethan. Uh, it's good for you to be here. And um, just as a broad overview, what is a Dole Fellow and what do they do? Well, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So I'm going to be leading a spring discussion group this semester starting February 13th at 4 o'clock at the Dole Institute. And it's going to be uh, seven, seven seminars. And so it's going to run every Wednesday starting on February 13th at 4 o'clock at the Dole Institute. And then it's going to be seven straight weeks other than the week that, that you have spring break. And so the role of the fellow is to really facilitate a discussion group on a particular topic. And so each week we're going to bring in a different guest to talk about a different aspect of the topic. And my topic is international trade in the 21st century. So we're going to be taking a look at international trade from a variety of angles with some really interesting guests. Most of the folks that we're going to be bringing in are folks that I worked with uh, when I was at the Department of Commerce. I was, a, I was part of the uh, Secretary of Commerce's le senior leadership team and then I was Chief of Staff of the International Trade Administration at the time that uh, the Obama administration was trying to pass the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So there's going to be folks that I worked with who've touched on trade from a variety of different angles, some of them in working with Congress, some of them from a legal and enforcement standpoint, some of them from a policy standpoint. So we're really going to look at the issue, which I think is a really important issue, but is not always well understood by a lot of people. So we're going to look at it from several different lenses. Okay. What are some... Uh is there a difference between free trade and international trade? Are those interchangeable terms? Or? I, th I think they're largely inter inter interchangeable terms that folks use when they're talking about the general view that the way I would think about the terms are just sort of the general view that the U.S. should be engaged with the rest of the world. The U.S. should be engaging in, in commerce with the rest of the world because when you think about it, there's really three ways that the U.S. engages with the rest of the world. So the first is militarily, right? So it, that's something like defense arrangements that we have with other countries, alliances. The second is diplomatically. So that's the U.S. State Department, the United Nations, our system of embassies and consulates around the world. But the third way, and the one that I think is least understood, is through trade and commerce. And that's what we're really going to focus on. And so how does free trade, international trade, affect the average Kansan? It affects us in a lot of ways, and a lot of ways that we don't always think about. I mean, you think about uh, the Kansas farmer who sells his or her soybeans to China and, and the effect that current trade policy has had on those sales. It, it really does impact our state's economy because, as you know, our state's economy is, is uh, largely agricultural-based. I mean, that makes up a significant part of the Kansas economy. So it affects us in that way. It also affects us in ways that we don't always think about, right? I mean, it's, you know, the iPhone that a lot of us have in our pockets right now is actually manufactured in China and then sent to the U.S. to be sold here. Um, Ford Explorers that you see on the road are mostly assembled in Chicago and then sent all around the world to be sold there. So everything we do in our daily lives touches on, on this issue of America's role in the world and trade, and it's, but it's not always something that we always think about. It's not always top of mind. And so that's something I hope folks will get out of the discussion group is a better understanding of, of trade and America's role in free trade in the world. And so as the world, as our technology kind of advances and we kind of become more interconnected, do you think free trade is going to play a much larger role in our lives as opposed to maybe 20 years ago? You know, I think it depends. I think one of the things that's interesting in, about free trade and about international trade more generally is that for decades following World War II, there was this kind of bipartisan consensus that one of the few things that both parties agreed on throughout a number of decades was that, one, that the U.S. should be the leader of the free world, that we should lead what we call the liberal international order, and that the U.S. should be at the head of that. And that part of that leadership was engaging in free trade, was engaging in commerce with other countries, this sort of idea that the U.S. could be safer if we helped make other countries safer, that the U.S. could be richer if we helped other countries be richer, that the U.S. could be more prosperous if other countries were more prosperous. And that was something that was a broad bipartisan agreement through a number of decades. But what we've seen recently is a real retreat from that. I mean, right now, one of the few issues that both major political parties agree on uh, is that trade is now a bad thing. And so we've seen really 180 degree turn in how we've looked at free trade historically. I mean, traditionally, like I said, it was a, a very bipartisan uh, thing. I'll give you a couple examples. It was uh, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, was actually negotiated by the George H.W. Bush administration, but it was signed into law by President Clinton, who had a host of disagreements with the H.W. Bush administration on foreign policy. But one thing that he wanted to continue was to finalize that agreement. 
And that agreement actually was passed through Congress, so signed by a Democratic president, but passed in both the House and the Senate with more Republican votes than Democratic votes. And, and so that's sort of an example about how the pro-free trade view historically had been a pretty bipartisan issue, but now we've seen President Trump, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren really take a much harder line against free trade. So to answer your question, I think it's going to be very interesting to see which of those two views really sort of comes to dominate the American uh, viewpoint going forward and becomes American policy in the decades to come. And why do you think that is, that some people are, or, well, like you said, President Trump and then Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren are now kind of taking a different stance on free trade? I think one of the challenges with free trade is that um, there are a lot of arguments that people use and, and people say that, that trade has had these impacts. And, and that's one of the things I want to talk about in the discussion group is to take a look at some of the arguments against free trade and really try to understand them. I mean, I, I really want the, the group to be a nonpartisan, non-ideological discussion where we can really talk about these issues. But one example is you hear um, people on both the left and right politically make the argument that trade has, has killed American manufacturing. And I think that's an argument that, that we should take seriously, and that's going to be kind of a topic that we're going to discuss with some of our guests. You also hear the argument that all these formerly good-paying American jobs have gone overseas, and the reason for that is free trade, right? And, and I think so we should look at that, but we should also consider, is that right? Or is it things like technology? Is it things like artificial intelligence that have really contributed to some of the, the changes in our economy that we've seen over the past decades? So I think we should take those arguments seriously, but I think we should also be open to that there may be other reasons why we've seen these changes in our economy. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of a good way to you know, compare the two differences, pro, con, and then, like you said, you're going to mainly focus on looking at those other arguments and getting an understanding is it technology or is it because of these jobs that are going away? That, that's a very interesting take on that. And I think that's about all the time that we have. Is there any last minute things you want to say or mention about the seminar before we go to break? Well, I, I think that I'm really excited for what I think is going to be a really interesting series of discussions. And one of the things about this topic is that really no matter what you're interested in, whether it's law or business or communications or working in government or public policy, this discussion group is really going to touch on all of those aspects. So I think that there's going to be something interesting in these sessions for every student, no matter what their interest. And so I'm really looking forward. Again, we're starting February 13th, and we'll go seven weeks after that, 4 o'clock at the Dole Institute, and I hope to see a lot of students there. And if you if you miss the first one, is it okay to go to the second one or like go to Absolutely. as many as you can? Absolutely. It, it goes, does it go chronologically or each one kind of its own? Each one is going to focus on a kind of a discrete topic. So we're going to talk, for example, one of the sessions we focused on uh, working with Congress and talking with Congress about trade and how Congress right now is looking at trade agreements. One will be talking about the communications aspect of free trade. Okay. One will be talking about how we enforce trade agreements once we've entered into them. So each of them is going to take a, a cut at trade from a little bit of a different angle. So I think it's going to be a really interesting series. Sounds great. And once again, Ethan, thank you for coming by to Media Crossroads. And we'll be back after the break. local in the heart of the city, you support the people that make our community thrive. The money you spend here stays here, in this place we call our home. Lawrence, Kansas, where there's good old-fashioned hometown pride. Eat local, drink local, shop local. Connor. And I'm Carly. This is your Wednesday Good Evening KU News Update. Lawmakers may have a principle that will avoid another government shutdown. President Trump is still demanding the funding for the wall along the southern border. The agreement is said to include $1.3 billion to be spent for a structure well short of the president's demands of $5.7 billion for a wall. The Mexican drug lord known as El Chapo was convicted in a U.S. court on Tuesday of drug trafficking. After escaping from Mexican jails on numerous occasions, Joaquin Guzman is expected to be sentenced to the Supermax prison in Colorado. Nothing is official, but if he's sent to the Supermax prison, El Chapo would spend 23 of 24 hours in solitary confinement. KU running back Puka Williams will face a jury trial on June 3rd for his domestic battery charge, although his attorney says a diversion agreement is still possible. 
Williams was charged after an incident on December 5th of last year. According to an arrest affidavit filed in Douglas County District Court, a KU police officer interviewed the victim who said she was punched in the stomach and the throat by Williams. It took overtime and huge performances from freshman Devon Dodson and Ochai Abbaji, but the men's basketball team just got what they needed on Monday night, an 82-77 win to pull the Jayhawks back within one game of conference, leading K-State. After hitting the halftime break tied at 37, Kansas started the second half with a big run and they were up 12 with 9 minutes left, but TCU would come back to eventually take the lead with 3 minutes left in regulation. KJ Lawson hit a game-tying layup with 24 seconds left, forcing overtime. During OT, Kansas took the lead with 3 minutes and 30 seconds left and never gave it up. Dotson finished with 25 points, including 4 clutch free throws in the final minute to end the 4-game road losing streak. The Jayhawks will be back in Allen Fieldhouse to face West Virginia on Saturday at 3 p.m. The women's basketball team lost a tough game last Wednesday night as they faced the Kansas State Wildcats in the Dillon Sunflower Showdown. The Jayhawks led for much of the game before falling 72-62 to in overtime. Seniors Austin Richardson and Crystal Lyons led Kansas with 16 and 15 points, respectively. The game had nine lean changes until K-State went on a 19-2 run to close out the victory. The results weren't much better for the Jayhawks on Saturday night as they fell to number 14 Texas. Senior Kylie Kopadich led the Jayhawks with his team high of 18 points. The Longhorns were quick to earn an early double-digit lead and the Jayhawks were unable to close the gap. Texas took the win with a final score of 91-73. And that will wrap it up for today's news update. Please keep watching and Madison will be here after the break with the weather forecast. Um, so, I have a bit of a technical glitch here, but I think we're going to go ahead and get started with the weather. I hope everybody was out and enjoying this 50 degrees that we experienced today. I don't think we've seen temperatures above like 40 in about a month. It's been gross, but today was really beautiful, and unfortunately, today and tomorrow is about all we get with that beautiful weather. Because moving into this weekend, we're going to see a pretty drastic change. So. From today, this morning, we had, like I said, we were around 50 degrees. So tonight our low, we're going to drop down to around 40. Our winds are going to pick up into tonight, and they'll kind of carry on into tomorrow. But what's really interesting is I wanted to look at the advisory. So when you're making a weather forecast, just some information, you always want to look to the west. So right here, we're looking at the west coast, and I wanted to take a look at the advisories that they're seeing for this storm system that's approaching in the next few days. So the system is in this area here, up near Idaho and into um, the uh, northeast, uh, northwest, my bad. Uh, these purple are winter weather advisories. These pink are uh, advisories for mixes. And then this orange here is high wind advisory. That is what we're going to be seeing tomorrow. We're going to see this wind move in along with this system. This is the system that we're going to be seeing in a few days. It doesn't look like much, but as it moves in and we see those winds increase, we're going to see quite a bit of change. And this is going to bring us a measurable amount of snowfall. So here I decided to take a look at our chances for the impacts, starting with accumulation. We've seen like from 10 inches to one inch. So it's kind of hard to put a number on it right now, but we do have a moderate chance for some sort of accumulation, like a, a moderate amount of accumulation. Same goes for ice. When the system first comes through, it's going to be a wintry mix. So we could see a layer of ice form on anything, any surface before that snow even falls. Then with that layer of ice, we have a higher chance of power outages. And as the snow falls, the more we have, the more chance we have for it collecting on trees which could fall on cables and such. So pretty moderate for that as well. 
Then because the system is so intense and we're going from such warm temperatures to such cold temperatures, which I will get to in a second, we are going to see some really high winds and so we do have a moderate chance for damaging winds in the next few days. All right, here's where we're going to talk about the fun stuff. So tomorrow we're going to see temperatures 51, so much like today, going to be nice, enjoy it, because by Friday we're going to go from 51 to 20, and that's all going to happen after lunchtime tomorrow. So that's when you're going to want to start paying attention. We're going to have a cold front move through after lunch, and we're going to see those temperatures drop from 51 to a low of about 16 by this evening, I mean tomorrow evening. Then into Friday, this is going to be the day you're going to want to watch the most, because after the morning rush hour, we have, that's when the chance of snow starts to increase, with it happening most likely after like five-ish. That's when we're gonna see the ice and the snow start to come through, and that's gonna continue into Saturday and Sunday, and then we even have a chance of snow into Monday. So again, look at these temperatures. We're going from 51 into the mid-20s, and then we kind of go up a little bit more. So enjoy your winter, enjoy your warm weather tomorrow, and be prepared because we have a whopper of a storm coming through and it's definitely going to have some impacts on the rest of your week into the weekend, any plans that you have. Tune back in Friday. We have another show. There's another meteorologist who will be, I mean forecaster who will be talking about it. So thank you so much for joining us today on our first uh, Wednesday Good Evening KU show and be safe and have a good week.